Hi. I was planning on doing a video on B12 tonight, but I didn't quite get my information together quick enough and I wanted it to be really thorough, so I'm going to postpone that. So tonight I'm going to focus on something that kind of like vegan gains. I don't really like how he represents the vegan community, but I understand that the beliefs of most vegans are strongly held and they feel it's extremely important that their message get out there and that people understand what the meat industry is doing and what the dairy industry is doing and stuff. So. I know that by him conducting himself the way he does, it stirs up controversy and helped his channel to grow really, really big, really, really fast. So it may be seen as a in justify the means type of thing, but like he's always like just randomly accusing everybody that's stronger than him of being on steroids and kind of seeing things just from his perspective like vegan gains is a a tall lanky guy he he's six three and he's got pretty long limbs so if you ask me he's got a real ectomorph type of body and since he trains really hard the way he does it's filled out pretty good because ectomorphs tend to be really skinny, more skinny than just 6'3", 180. So he, he's put some size on and stuff, even though from a big guy's perspective, he may seem skinny, but he does, he, his efforts have paid off over the years. But not everybody has an ectomorph type of body. So things that may seem far-fetched and unrealistic to achieve naturally to him can actually be done naturally. I'm speaking from personal experience both with myself and some of my friends that I help train. When I didn't do any strength training, when I was just a young kid filling out, I was about 6'1", 185. And then when I started like doing a ridiculous amount of push-ups and sit-ups and pull-ups and stuff, since it's all body weight, it doesn't put on muscle the way lifting weights does, but it did put on a tiny bit. I gained like 10 pounds, so then I was around 195 pounds. And when I started lifting weights, I just randomly lifted for like a year and, you know, like <clears throat> mostly like bench press, pull ups, some overhead presses and stuff. It wasn't a super organized program. and I focus maybe mostly on bench. I bench is kind of overrated and I put a lot of effort into it at the time. But I got my bench to where it was at 300 and I was really happy and then I was wondering how to keep it going up because you plateau after a while and I decided to study people that are really really strong so I started studying like the world's strongest man competitor type guys and professional power lifters and stuff because I wanted to be strong. I didn't want to have big huge muscles or be a bodybuilder or any of that. I just wanted to be strong. So when I did that I made the mistake of actually copying the people at the top. I was modeling the behavior of the champions and these are really, really huge, super strong people that burn a ton of calories. So what may have made sense for them was kind of going overboard for me. So I was doing like six 1,000 calorie meals a day with like 50 grams of protein. And in two months, I went from 195 to 215 pounds. And I was lifting super, super hard and I got a lot stronger. So I I wasn't like fat, it was like real muscle. 
And that was all natural because I've hardly, hardly even taken any supplements. I, before I knew about how overrated protein was, I used to take protein right after my workout and that was it. And back when I did that, I wasn't even doing that yet. I was just eating a lot of food. I didn't even have supplements yet. So that was just me eating a whole bunch of yogurt and apples and cereal and steak and all kinds of random food and training really, really hard and just ingesting that kind of caloric intake with that high of protein, I gained 20 pounds in two months. So it can be done. Like, I know that this um, Vince DiCola guy or whatever said he gained like 40 pounds or something in like six months. And I think if he's actually trying to gain weight instead of just trying to get strong and gaining weight on accident as a side effect, that that seems completely reasonable. He looked like he had a more of a mesomorphic body type like I do. So that doesn't strike me as unusual at all. And then I also had a friend who he was an ectomorph. He was like Vegan Gaines. He was a, a tall skinny guy. He wasn't quite as tall as Vegan Gaines. He's only about 6'2". But when I met him, he was like 6'2", 145. And he couldn't even like bench 135. But he's the kind of guy that when he sees something he likes, he pays attention and models it. And he asked me questions and stuff. And he applied everything that I told him and he went from 145 to 170 and I don't recall how long it went but how long it took for that to happen but he was a very health conscious person as well and as far as I know he didn't have any supplements at the time except maybe some protein I know he did creatine later but he hadn't tried it yet at that time so all I'm saying is it is possible to naturally gain muscle rather quickly without using steroids. So I just don't like the way he always cries steroids all the time when he disagrees with someone. It's like a poisoning the well fallacy. And I think he uses a lot of fallacies in his art arguments. Like I do like that he cites his studies. I do like that he got so much exposure so that people are thinking about veganism if they're not so turned off by how he approaches it that they don't think about it but I like much much better how John Venus represents the vegan community he's very intelligent he's very respectful he just is a great example and obviously I love the way this guy represents us. This guy, man. Go out there, break world records, make yourself so good that nobody can even try to argue. You know, that's that's the kind of heroes and models I feel we should have. So that's just a little something I wanted to bring up since I didn't prepare well enough to do the video I intended on doing.